Hi, and welcome to another exciting edition of CG Shader Programming. My name is Nate Nestler, and this is for Hyperactive Studios. So, if you look over here on the side, we're going to start playing with UVs. And you might be going, well, why do I care? Well, let's see why we should care, basically. Um, this is really cool, because I can come in here, well, first off, we still have our standard shading stuff. Now I just have a reflective shader um, coded out on here. So we got a reflective strength on here, yay. And it makes it more and more or less reflective, so on and so forth. Which is to say, no surprise, we've done this already a little while ago. <laughs> this is becoming easier stuff now, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and hit specular up. Yay, we can change our speculars. Um, and you know, this is nothing sh new. Um, but what is new is this right here, where we can start repeating number of textures along a certain axis here. Or stretch them out. Well no, it's gonna get you back to normal. Okay. And this is really needed for artists. Artists absolutely have to have this. They'll um in order to keep from um having to add tremendous amounts of detail that would slow the game down, they make a single little texture that they can repeat over and over again across the surface of the model. So it's really important that you program out uh, a good UV uh, manipulation system for their models. If you do, they can get away without having to do a whole bunch of extra work. This can actually save them a tremendous amount of time. And the reason why is if you actually just zoom in or repeat something over and over again and then move it around and manipulate it in a certain way um, you can make each and every single object in the scene look different so think about trees rocks anything like that you, they could sit there and literally make one rock with a set of textures on it and then simply just move them on the UVs or rotate them or whatever and if you have like random values go across them then you can make it do it for uh, all the objects in the scene and thus making it uh, look like um, every rock or every tree is different in the entire scene. So that's really important. Um, and then here's also the rotation center here. So you can offset the rotation center. Like before we were just like, there we go, let's see what we can't do here. There's rotation center. Ta-da. Alright. See how it's offsetted. Um, we can also do an offset where we actually move it to the side or that way, so on and so forth. So again, that's really important for an artist. They need that kind of stuff. They'll find that, hey, uh, I threw my texture on there, but it didn't really go in the exact place I wanted it to. They need to be able to move it around and place it how they need it on um, the image here on the 3D model. You might go, well, why do I care? Well, again, um, it comes down to, say if an uh, artist made a manhole, right? And they got a slapped image on there only to find that the UVs placed the manhole halfway off the uh, plane and then halfway off on the other side, the plane, on the other end. So basically you'd have like the manhole appearing here and here instead of in the center of this image. If I have an offset here, I can just move that manhole back to the center and bam, it looks fine. Now I don't have to go in and do any special UV and wrapping and blah blah blah. So it's a matter of like two seconds, they have it fixed instead of like an hour trying to fix that stupid thing. You know, so again, it makes life easier for them. It really speeds things up and it allows for extra capabilities. What I've also done in here, okay, let's also talk about flipping on the U. So we can also flip across the U. As you can see there, we just flip that map. And we can also flip on V too. Yep, it's so cool. That's also very helpful. Artists need to flip their textures every so often too for flipping the UVs. So this is a full uh, UV set here. And then also, what most packages don't have, I went over how to do it because this is really important for artists. That's how to animate your UVs and make them move and such of that nature. So. I think I have. Mm hmm. Okay, about to say I know I have animation rotation too. All right, let me hit play here. You know, well, nothing happened. You know, well, I didn't turn it up yet. So as you can see, the image is just sliding by here. 
Uh, this is really good for a lot of things. Um, you can make it look like water is flowing across the surface of a model just by animating the UVs here on U or V or both or whatever. You can, um, another, a good trick here for doing water, animated water, where there's no actual geometry, it's just a flat plane, uh, they'll do is they'll do this right here. Well, they'll animate it on the U and the V like this across the UVs like this. All right. And then you can get two textures or layer going across it. And it looks like waves are breaking up and such when you do that. <laughs> That's it. I mean, it's nothing complicated. You throw normal maps in there and you have, or relief mapping or whatever, and you sit there and cross them like that. And, you know, um, you can even do algorithms for varying the animated with a sine wave or cosine wave for the stretching or for the, uh, you know, for the uh, repeating of the wave or whatnot, back to one, less than one, so on and so forth within a range. You could do a lot of stuff like that in order to make it like the water is moving in and out and so on and so forth while it's flowing and going. And So there's a lot of stuff you could do with this. And it just comes down to, you got to realize we're doing smoke and mirrors here for a lot of this stuff. Uh, true, we do code a lot of stuff that's realistic, actual physical uh, light and all that, but a lot of this stuff we have to do smoke and mirrors because it's too daggone expensive to compute real world in game on a little computer that they bought for five hundred dollars out of you know some store and then have it run this amazing simulation right so basically um, getting to the point where you can um, and this is fun too by the way and the offset um, works for the animation too alright and so there's a nice little slow spin to it so and this is also good for like things like fire. You sit there and animate the UVs moving or whatever across the surface. And it makes it look like fire is rippling underneath the surface just by animating those textures and such layered. Uh, and it really does make a huge difference. So let's go over how you go about actually uh, animating, uh, creating these animated UVs and rotations and how to do all these UV manipulations. All right. So... Um, we have the Fong Reflection Shader here and with the Fuse Texture with UV Manipulation is what I called it. All you have to do is come up here to your Create here and say Effect, say CGFX, say Next, and say Empty and then call it um, UV Texture Manipulation. Um, I don't know if I copied much from... I think I copied from the Reflection Shader, yeah. So it's copy from the Reflection Shader um, with textures on it and that's what I did and I added this world map because it's very obvious when it repeats so I added that oh on another note here just another little trick I want to show you that artists like to do with this uh, techniques and such um, what you do is you can come in here and you've got repeat along U and V right so let's like pull this down to a decent amount less Oh, I don't know. 25% sounds good to me. So 0 0.25. I'm going to be exact on this because I don't want any stretching. As you can see, we're getting stretching right now. Now we won't get stretching. Okay, cool. And then now, um, when I want to offset this, check this out. Look at that. I am moving across my image. <laughs> So as you can imagine, this can be pretty useful. So not always does, always does the whole image have to even appear on the geometry. You can have it move across it like this. And like I said, you can have animated water, you can have animated, you name it. Um, it'll look amazing. There's other tricks and stuff like that uh, I haven't gotten into uh, for how to make things look even more impressive shall we say, uh, for models and such without using nearly as much texture capabilities. We need to do stuff like that as programmers in order to uh, help the artists achieve high quality looking uh, work in the game engine. We need to enable them to do that and if we don't um, they won't be able to really pull off a really good looking game. So it's very important that we enable the artists as much as possible in order to achieve as good of a look as possible so that way they can get top quality graphics in game so that the uh, product sells otherwise if the product doesn't sell of course the company goes out of business and it folds so um, 
it's really vital actually <laughs> that um you do your job well because <laughs> um, it's the same thing for the artists they have to uh, do their job very well too so um you really have to hit it because um the uh, fans are not so forgiving a lot of times I'm afraid of a lot of games all right so here's matrix transforms and um float 4x4 here world view projection matrix world view this is the stuff we should already have all this uh time so added timer a timer is new Make sure you do have view IX. I think I do I already have that in there previously. I'm just trying to remember. I wrote this a few weeks ago, so I don't remember so well. <laughs> but uh, throw float timer in there, uh, colon time. Open, close, uh, less than signs, greater than signs. String UI widget equals none, because we don't want this to appear in our interface here. OK. And this lamp pose here, position, lamp pose, lamp zero color, specular, that whole thing uh, should be there from before. Here's our global ambient and our KA and our KD and our KS. And so everything from a standard um, re uh, reflection shader that we've been doing. Specular power, here's our KR term for our reflection strength. So yeah, make sure you just get that timer in there. Okay. And let's get to what we haven't coded beforehand. And this is what's new. This is what's important, besides the time. The time was important too. Um, so basically, we have our texture controls, or basically, yeah, this is called texture controls. And we're going to repeat along S. Now remember when you have the UMV and you remap them, you call them what? S and T. So that's why we're saying repeat S and repeat T when it says repeat U and re re repeat along V. Now the artists don't realize, I'd say 99% of the time, that we actually rename our UVs as S and T um, when we're doing this in uh, underneath the hood. So don't let them know that. They uh, It's just going to confuse them. So just refer to everything as U and V in their interface so that way they don't get confused because they are not used to seeing things as S and T. Um, Unless you program this stuff, chances are, or worked with Houdini or something like that, chances are you uh, are not familiar seeing uh, S and T. They're referred to as U and V almost always in all the applications. So artists really have no exposure to the terms S and T. So again, make sure you name all your controls U and V for the artist when you're referring to the different parts of S and T. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm saying float, repeat S here. Open less than sign string UI widget equals in quotes here slider close quote semicolon float UI min equals 0 0.0001 semicolon float UI max equals 4.0 semicolon float UI step equals 0 0.0001 semicolon string UI name equals in quotes here repeat along U um, here semicolon Close greater than sign equals 1.0 semicolon. So again, that sets up our repeat over here, and this is repeat along U, as you can see right here, which is actually S, because it gets remapped. And the reason why, again, we remap it, you might go, well, why are we remapping it? Why not just call it? Well, because um, you can't directly manipulate U and V, so you remap it as S and T, manipulate S and T, and then apply it back to the UVs, basically. For that space and that works all right so float repeat t here open uh, uh lesson sign here string ui widget equals slider so just take the first one copy and paste it um yeah so let's take repeat s copy and paste it change it to v over here change that to t right here and you're done <laughs> just let's not do any extra work all right, great. Now copy and paste it again down here. <laughs> Change it to from repeat T to angle. All right. And you're going to change your UI here to 0, 0.0. And our UI max is 360 degrees. So 360.0. Semicolon. Oh, I know. I guess what? You know, starting to think about it. So we got this angle here. 
I always do this, don't I? <laughs> I start going on this, and I was like, hey, you know what would be cool if I changed something in this <laughs> and didn't test it beforehand? <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, if you want to rotate it the other way, kind of need negative 360. That's what I was thinking just now. I was like, you know, it would be better if we had a negative 360 in there. Oh, not 3,000, though. That would not be good. All right, compile. Awesomeness. All right. So let's check out our new control here. Yeah. And now we can go both ways with our rotations, which is really useful because sometimes they need to rotate it the other way. So that would be important. All right. I just did a full step of one just because there's so few... Um, no, oh, just because there's so many degrees in a rotation. So, you know, um, so yeah, I just changed that UI min here to negative 360, not zero, and the UI max to positive 360, and your UI step to 1.0. And we're just going to name it here as UV rotation right here. So it gives you your UV rotation uh, right here. So it lets the artist know that, hey, you can rotate your UVs. Or you can say rotate UVs if you want. I don't care. It's whatever you want to do, you know? Um, so float here, rot center S. All right. So this is our rotation center along U. Right now it's 0 0.5. That should be the default, 0 0.5. Don't change that. Leave that as the default right here. Again, so just copy and paste again right here. So our minimum on this is going to be 0, 0.0 which makes sense and it goes to 1.0 because remember your texture space goes from 0 to 1 so that should be your min and max and then your UI step here is 0 0.01 semicolon so this is all the little variations in between we'll just do it to 0.1 that's good enough uh, it's for government work you could go lower if you liked but it's probably going to cover it right there rotation center U um, it's the center of the thing. Close greater than sign equals 0 0.5 semicolon. Do the same thing. Copy and paste this and say rote center T. Awesome. And then uh, nothing else changes except for here. You just need to change that to a T. <laughs> That's it. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Next one. We need to do offsets, don't we? All right. So, copy and paste again, and then change this to negative 10, and then 10 for our set. So, you know, and of course I did this so for the offset here, so you can take this and go either way with it, both that way and this way. And the reason why I did it to positive 10 and negative 10, you're like going, wow, that's a lot, really. Yeah, um, but the thing is, is that what if you had this, uh, you know, scaled down like I was doing earlier along the um, repeat along U and V down to a much smaller number like 0.25, right? Well, it's going to take a lot more than just one to get across the surface here. You have to go to like four to get across it that way and four to go that way and so on and so forth. So you know this number is going to increase quite a bit for what you need to have for the offset in order to move across to get to where you need to go on the image here across the surface so it's going by really quick because this is on a 0 to 1 mapping currently but if it's like a 0 to 0.25 then you would need more of an offset to move across it so FYI be aware of that and that's why I put these big numbers in here of negative 10 to 10 because uh, you do need it sometimes, and sometimes this isn't a big value later on. So it depends on how you've manipulated your, U, your UVs. Um, all right. UI step is equal to 0 0.01 here. Uh, string UI name equals, and then this is going to be offset U, of course. And it's going to be 0, 0.0. Again, all right, I hate that extra space. I keep doing that. <laughs> Seems like I do this in almost everything I... Uh, code. All right. So, um, offset that, uh, copy and paste, offset S, and paste it again, 
change the S to a T, change it to a V, and you're done. Animate S. Animate S. Let me scroll down some more. All right, so copy and paste your offset T here. These are a bunch of floats, so it's the same process over and over again. Change it from offset T to animate S here. And then, again, these values are the same. Why? Because we're just basically doing our offsets animated. Um, so there's really no difference there. Uh, but these are values that are going to be hand handled underneath the hood elsewhere. We'll get into that later uh, in the code for how we did that. All right. So, um, it's important that you uh, just change that to animate S and then say animate U here. That's it. Copy and paste this down here. Say animate T now. And change that to animate V. So just change it from a U to a V right here. And then you're done with that one too. These cheaters are really starting to have a lot of code in them, but thankfully it's a lot of repeated stuff we've done before, so you know we don't have to do as much coding. Alrighty, and then we're just going to go ahead and hit our animation rotation. Uh, let me move it to here in case some people are still copying. All right, so there we go. So float animate rotation here. Um, open uh, lesson sign here. Uh, again, this is just going to be a copy and paste deal from the animate T here. So change that T to a rotation. And then we're going to have for our UI minimum, it's going to be negative 50. Our UI max is going to be positive 50. Uh, and if the UI step is 0 0.001 here, and then again, animate UV rotation. Take on spaces on everything. All right. Um, and just as a show here, Hopefully this doesn't make people sick at home, but this thing can really get going uh, when you turn it up to full speed here. So yeah, it's pretty fast. Versus that there, you know. So, you, know, you can set the different speeds that you want it to be on here, and it's cool start going to the faster speeds it's going to go pretty quick so but you know maybe they need to go quick for something so I'll let it go quick I think after 50 though it's going so fast good luck you know it even tell you know it's going much faster so 50 is pretty fast um, flip U flip V we need to set those up so that should, yeah sorry it should be animate UV rotation again set to zero for all these animations, so that way it's not animating unless they want it to be animating, which then they move it. All right, so bool here, flip U, bool, flip V here, copy and paste those, and then we'll just have these as true false statements here. And that will let you um, actually flip them, so they're real simple. Um, I, I don't know, they're so simple. Um, just handwrite these. It's easier to handwrite. Handwrite the first one and copy and paste it to the second one. Bull here, flip you, open less than sign here, string UI name equals in quotes, flip space U, question mark, close qu quotes here, semicolon. Okay, again, I want them to know flip the UV. Do you want to do that? Uh, greater than sign, you don't have to put the question mark, it's up to you. Equals false semicolon, we do want it to be false because we don't want to flip it unless they want it to be flipped. Bull flip V here is less than sign here, string UI name equals in quotes here, flip V question mark close quote semicolon, open greater than sign equals false semicolon. Now let's just set up our U and our V. Next thing of interest is float lighting here. Less than sign here, string UI widget equals in quotes, slider, close quote, semicolon, float UI min equals 0, 0.0, semicolon, float UI max equals 1.0, semicolon, float UI step equals 0, 
one semicolon and then string UI name equals use lighting as to whether or not you want to use the lighting. What? What's that? Well, let's look at this. This is pretty good. I got cool, really. Click on this right here and you can adjust whether or not the lighting influences, influences your model. So you can actually animate, or not animate, well you could if you wanted to. I don't know why you would do that, but you could actually um, go back and forth and set just how much you want the lighting model to influence your 3D model there. And of course 1.0 is full influence and 0 is no influence at all. So pretty simple. Copy and paste your animation or your animate uh, rotation down here. Call it lighting. Make your min value here 0, 0.0. Make your max value 1.0. Your step size 0, 0.01. And then say use lighting. Semicolon here for UI name. Greater than sign equals 1.0 semicolon. Cool. So that gets some of the controls in place that we're going to be playing with. So it's really nice to have your shaders, and especially if you're doing like a deferred shader system, you can just throw this in there, and then this would let them manipulate multiple uh, textures and UVs and things of that nature on there, and you want to be able to have this for each texture for this manipulation basically on the UVs. Uh, so that way you can uh, manipulate textures independently of each other. Pretty important really. And um, it's allowed them to animate them and all kinds of crazy stuff. but. Let's look at some more stuff here and let's get down to this where you do color textures. Now this is just your standard color texture that you're familiar with from before. Um, shouldn't be anything new here, but it's just texture, color texture, open lesson sign, string, resource name equals in quotes default underscore color dot DDS close quote semicolon. I didn't end up I ended up finding this world map one somewhere in the NVIDIA stuff and um, I uh, threw it on here because I thought that was better for repeats. Um, and then here, string UI name equals diffuse texture. Good grief. Diffuse texture. String resource type is equal to 2D. Close the quote, semicolon. Uh, sampler 2D here, color sampler equals sampler underscore state. Uh, open uh, greater than, oh, sorry, open curly brace. Uh, texture here equals an open close greater than less than signs. Color texture semicolon here. Min filter equals linear mip map linear semicolon. Mag filter is equal to linear semicolon. Wrap s equals repeat semicolon. Wrap t equals repeat semicolon. Close curly brace semicolon. And then we need to set up our what? Because we're doing this with a reflection shader, we need to have our uh, cube map uh, reflection texture. So texture here, environment uh, environment texture, EMV texture, colon, environment, open less than sign, string, resource name equals, in quotes, default, underscore, reflection, dot, DDS, close, quote, semicolon. String here, UI name equals, in quotes, environment, close quotes, semicolon, string, resource type equals cube, in quotes, semicolon. Sampler cube. Here, EMV sampler equals sampler underscore state. Open curly brace here, texture equals greater than, less than size, texture EMV, uh, sorry, EMV texture here. So we call it, it's got to match this one, right? Because we're referring, we're saying take this texture and we're going to sample from it right here. Okay, so that's important. Uh, mag filter linear semicolon, min filter linear mip map linear semicolon. Wrap S equals clamp to edge semicolon. Wrap T clamp to edge semicolon. Wrap R clamp to edge semicolon. Close curly brace semicolon. <laughs> Struct here, it's normal as always. It's just your position, uh, text chord, and normal for normal mapping. Uh, on here. Wait, did I even put normal mapping on here? Why well, I didn't? <laughs> well, okay, but this isn't a normal texture. This is the normals of the surface. So, sorry, surface normals here. So, yeah, I'll leave that there. Don't take that out, please.
All right, so that covers us for our environment texture. Again, you could just copy and paste these from previous projects if you want, so you don't have to type it out. It's up to you what you want to do. But there you go. If you need to pause the video and then do, do that and come back, that's cool. Um, if you want to hand type it out, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, right? All right, there we are. Struct here, VS out here, open curly brace. Float four here, position, colon, position, semicolon. Float two, UV, colon, text chord, zero, semicolon. So, and then we have our LWN, NWN, VWN, RWN, and reflection. So this is nothing new. It's just all the same. Nothing's changed here. It's all the standard reflection shader stuff. So nothing, none of this should, that stuff should have been changed or new for you. Uh, same old, same old. Uh, FS out here. Here's your out color. All right. Again, nothing's changed on that either. So most of the stuff's going to be happening here in the vertex shader. So let me scroll down to it. You'll notice our vertex shader goes on for a little bit. Um, and, you know, most of this is the shader stuff we're doing. Now, this right here is all from before. So you should already have this from your reflection texture. Uh, shader. So I'm not going to go over this stuff. I've already gone over it several times over. So I have no need to discuss this. However, this next part down here is our texture manipulation stuff that this whole you know project is over. So let's focus on that. Because that's what matters right here. Okay, so we're going to do float angle here equals radians here. Open parentheses, angle plus in parentheses, animation, uh, sorry, animate rotation times timer, close parentheses, semicolon. So what does this do? This lets us do our angle. Remember what our angle is. Some of you guys are going, going, I don't remember. That's okay. Don't worry. I will go over it right now as soon as I can make this thing scroll up. Why won't it scroll up? Oh, that's weird. No, it does. All right. Sure. Awesome. <laughs> whatever this is your angle right here okay so remember we named it angle for this one so that's why um, in capital A sorry angle this is lowercase angle this is the final result of that angle so we're going to convert into radians okay so it's going to go for a percentage value because artists don't understand Let's be honest, they don't understand radians, they understand degrees. Uh, you can talk to a common guy off the street, he, he knows degrees. He doesn't know what a radian is, probably. I know that everyone learned it in school, back in high school, uh, in trigonometry. But regardless, people don't remember what radians are, and you have to jog their memory. People have been thinking about degrees their entire life since they were a little kid. So that's what they're going to remember right off the top of their head. So just call it, degree, use degrees here, and then we convert it to radians, and then that way it's more human, re usable, and readable. You know, do you think 90 degrees, or do you think, you know, half pi? <laughs> you know, that's my, that's my point. You know, 90 degrees comes to, m to mind real quick, but half pi doesn't, you know. So, again... Make sure you uh, have it set to a degree, so otherwise you're going to have artists coming over to throw spitballs at you. All right, so right here we're going to do the uh, animate rotation here, and we're going to multiply times our timers for our animation, for animation ticks. Float here, COS angle equals COS here, open um, parentheses here, angle, close parentheses, semicolon. Float here, sine, angle here, equals sine, open uh, parentheses, angle, close parentheses, semicolon. Um, let's see here, float 2 here, offset, rote, st, equals float 2, open parentheses, rote, center, s, comma, rote, center, t, close parentheses, semicolon, float 2, st, uh, equals in dot uv dot xy. All right, so what are we doing here? Here we're getting our cosine, which is our x position, if you will. And then this is sine of the angle. It's going to give me my y position. This is what happens when you go from um, Euler, not sorry, Euler. So this is what happens when you go from polar coordinates 
to a um, rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, polar coordinates are basically you have a oh gee I didn't even think I was going to get into this. Um, let's talk about this I guess. Because <laughs> um, then you can represent it in such a way. So let's just go to my blog real quick. All right, so here's an example of polar coordinates, right? We're just going off to the side um, like this, and it's based on some angle. You just determine an angle, and then the length of it is based on R. That's all it is. And you get these algorithms here for going from uh, this to an X and Y type graphing of it. This doesn't use X and Y. This uses an angle and a length for a vector. So there you go. That is polar coordinates. So essentially that's what's going on there. And um, basically um, we can express this in X and express this in Y. And matter of fact, that's covered in any calculus three course. They would go over polar coordinate systems with vectors and such, and we go in between it and rectangular coordinates. And we do a nice little breakdown of how that works. So it's really cool, it's really simple. Um, I don't know, it's easy. Um, offset wrote ST here, we're doing a float, so we're gonna give it, so we basically offset our S and our T. So float two over here, open parentheses, wrote center S comma, wrote center T, close parentheses, semicolon, float two, uh, ST equals IN dot UV dot XY here. So again, that's just for manipulating our UV. So here we're saying our UVs and assign it to ST because we're going to refer to it as ST thereafter. Makes life easier. All right. So if flip UV, right? So if we tell it to flip the UV, we're going to say ST dot X equals 1.0 minus ST dot X semicolon, right? So we've got zero to one relationship, right? So we're just going to flip it the full amount of whatever our UV position is. And then that will make it go on the opposite side from where we're at. And just a proof of it, that it does. If I flip this, yes, see, it flipped it. Now it's across U, V is across this way. So when I flip V, it's gonna flip it upside down like that. Again, that's just another, just copy and paste this one here and say flip V um, here, and then say Y here and Y here. And once you put Y here instead of X in both places and say V here, then it's going to flip the other way along V instead of along uh, U. All right. So that's going to flip them how we need them. And again, this works because it's a zero to one relationship and we're subtracting our current position in the UV uh, from one, so it's just going to make it go on the opposite side because it does go to a zero to one. That's going to make it flip to the other side, and it works as you can see. So very simple mathematics, but it works. ST equals ST minus offset wrote ST. Now remember, this is our offset earlier. So when we say offset U or offset V, oh wait, this is for our wrote rotations. Where was that? Yeah, rotate center. Okay, yeah, so this is our rotation center offsets here. So we subtract this here from our S and T for our rotation center in order to create our offsets for our rotations. Float two, uh, float two here, rotate UV equals float two, open parentheses, ST dot X times cos angle minus ST dot Y times sine angle comma ST dot X times sine angle plus st dot y times oh wow people have to pause this <laughs> cos angle semicolon okay don't worry I'm going to scroll it back again here in just one second let's uh, break this down real quick um, again that is just float to here rotate uv equals float to parentheses st dot x times our cos over an angle, because remember what's cos angle here, converting from polar coordinates over to rectangular coordinates, 
that would be an X. So we actually get to uh, refer to this in X for our rotation positional point. And then we're going to subtract this from our ST dot Y times our sine angle. Because again, remember this expresses that rotation from pole coordinates to rectangular coordinates along Y. And so that gives us our, our first U type coordinate set up there. And then we need to do what? The next part, which is going to be our V part. All right, and the next part is going to be here st dot x times sine angle plus st dot y times cos angle. And again, this is your y term here for multiplying times x, and this is your um, x term here. And this causes it to rotate. Let's see here about some angle here. Remember we're having to offset it for rotation and actually make it rotate about an axis. So we have to not forget that we need to offset stuff too. So that's working for offsetting it and it takes both X and Y in order to do the rotation about some axis. So in this case we're going about an imaginary um, Sorry, I'm going to move this over a bit for people still. Have an imaginary uh, pole sticking up here out the center of this texture. And you want to spin this around here. Then you're manipulating your uh, Y up here and your X over here to reposition these points here on the texture on the image for U and V in order to make it spin. And that's essentially what we're doing here as a breakdown of that. Um, and that's why we're multiplying subtracting these from each other in order to get the uh, value for where something is positioned because we're no longer just doing it along U or along V we're actually having to manipulate those to make them rotate we're doing this without shearing or anything like that like what's happened back on doing it in CPU people have to worry about these pixels overlapping or shearing or something like that works out quite well for us on the 3D graphics uh, GPU programming here on, on CG shaders. I'm going to move this over and just give people a little bit more space to type, as, type this out if they need to go back and look at this one more time here. Alright, but hopefully not. Hopefully they got that covered pretty well. Alright, so I'll just do this real quick. Should have done that earlier, right? <laughs> there we go. Now the whole thing fits. Oh well. ST equals rotate UV plus offset rote ST semicolon. All right. So now we're going to take our rotate UV and add it to our offset rotate uh, ST here. So we're done doing our whole uh, rotation thing. So now we need to add it back so that way we move our, our um, UVs back to the proper place. We just offset it only for the rotation calculations. And after we're done uh, with our rotation calculations, then we move everything back to its proper position again. That's what we're doing there. So that's how we're not just offsetting everything all together. And we're like, well, why isn't it just moving off when we did subtraction earlier? Well, that's why because we subtract it and we come back to add it back and then move it back into the center position. But we did need to offset it when we did our rotation. So that way it would rotate about that point, if you will. And so here's just a bunch, these are just a bunch of calculations to make it rotate about that point uh, that we have as a center point, if you will. Everything's expressed from. So essentially that's what's going on here. It's very cool, very cool math. Um, and then let's do out.uv here equals float to open parentheses max open parentheses 0 0.001 comma repeat s close parentheses times st dot x plus open parentheses offset s plus open parentheses animate s times timer open parentheses open sorry close parentheses close parentheses comma max here open parentheses 0 0.001 comma repeat t close parentheses times st dot y plus open parentheses offset t plus 
open parentheses, animate times timer, close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. Okay, what was all that? All right, well, remember to repeat S and T. We need to have it go into a range where range is maximum uh, that we can go down to for a small amount is 0 0.001. We can't go down to zero. We can't, the smallest we can possibly go to is 0 0.001 because the texture must exist on the surface. If you go below that, it's not going to exist anymore. So that's as low as you can go. Um, and then we're going to multiply this times our st dot x here, which is basically your repeat s, you know, type, uh, it's an s term, sorry, not repeat s, but it's your s term of your s and t uh, by doing the dot x here, plus offset s here. So now we're going to offset it. So now this is, I set it up to where you do it both ways, right? So when they come in here and say offset v u right here, which is our offset s, same thing. Um, I also have it set where we can add this to the actual animation s, so it can be offset like this, plus also be animated with a timer. You're like, well, who cares if you're animating it? Well, regardless, it works either way, so that we can turn off the animation and it's still offset it like you might want it to be. Doesn't matter. You can handle it either way. In this way, everything just works mathematically all the time. So that's why I'm going to do offset here, add it to the animation, uh, animate S, and then multiply it times timer, because it needs to be animated over time. Kind of simple. Of course, if we're not running this with timer, then it's just zero, and then and nothing happens to the animation. Of course, if the animation has, um, you know, uh, zero value in there, and we have timer, and we have the timer running, then it still doesn't animate it because we told it to not animate anything at all. But the moment the timer is running and this is added to additional values, it's going to start moving and animating across the surface. So, like for instance, like that for instance. All right. So comma. So that gives us our what? This is our whole S term for our UV manipulation. That is our S term right there. All right. So remember, since we've applied everything we just did earlier on the rotations to our S and T, then it's real simple. We're just manipulating our S and T yet again. So again, we're applying everything to our S and T, which goes out to our uh, out.uv, which is actually what's getting outputted for the surface. And then it'll get passed over here to our PS shader. All right, but anyways, um, max here again, you can just copy and paste this line to over here. Because it's the same thing, basically. So the max is 0 0.001, comma, repeat t. So you're going to change your s to a t times st dot y. So again, you're going to change it from x to y because this is your v. This is your t term here, or if you want to think about u and v, this is your what your v term. Plus in parentheses here, offset t plus what animate t times timer, close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. So we pretty much went over that already. So this one does your s, and this one does your t. And it allows for your uvs to be animated like this, and or offsetted. Simple enough. Probably the most complicated thing in the whole part of this is the rotations. That's about it. Because the rest of this is pretty straightforward and simple, honestly. All right. Going further. If I'm not mistaken, we don't have anything to do. Yeah. Really nothing to do there. So nothing changes in the technique. You just leave it alone. It's not going to do anything. All right. So most of this, again, for the PS shader comes from what? Comes from the previous reflection shader, and we don't need to really go over any of that. Now note, I did have to make, I did have to make some changes, and that is because, basically, um, this isn't going to work out like it was before. We need to change things up so that way it can be manipulated for the lighting, so that way that good old lighting um, bar here can be taken in or out of our model. Cool. So how do we do that? Well, 
So you can see I took out this out.color and I broke it into its parts here. So out.color equals float4 here, open parentheses, specular plus, open parentheses, kd.rgb, RGB, sorry, times open parentheses diffuse plus ambient close parentheses, close parentheses, comma 1.0 F close parentheses semicolon. So that's just letting us set up our what? Our specular or fuse and our ambient terms. Cool. And then from there, I'm saying, and that's just setting up basically our lighting. So this, this is basically our lighting calculation right here. Okay, that's all that is. And so that goes into our out.color. Awesome. So now we do a lerp here. And remember, lerp is linear interpolation. So now we're going to say in a float here, three, uh, and then open parentheses, one, comma, one, comma, one, close parentheses here. So that's going to say we're comparing it with one. Well, what's one, one, one going to be? Well, it means full value, all right? So it means we're going to have total lighting with one point, one, 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 one comma here out dot color RGB which is our lighting here and this lets us determine the color of the uh, point on the lighting so without lighting you're gonna have full fully lit you know there's gonna be no variation in the lighting so it's just gonna be fully lit but with lighting you're gonna have variations so we're going from zero which is one 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 to one, which is going to be color here for our lighting, going across whatever the lighting value is here for blending between the two. So again, there's one, 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 where we have no lighting influence, it's just solid brightness across everything. There's no lighting calculations being done. Well, they're being done but not used. And then here it is without the lighting. I mean, with the lighting on it. So there is with the lighting when you say use lighting turn to one because again whatever is on this side of this um, lerp here is going to be what is going to be the one oh and whatever is on this side of the lerp is going to be your zero value here and then this is what's determining the blend between the two here in the lighting all right so that lets us uh, you know handle our lighting how much we use it or not uh, and then we need to also apply our kr term to be manipulated too so we have our out color uh, dot RGB here equals out dot color dot RGB times what? Diffuse color dot RGB plus reflection color dot RGB, close parentheses, semicolon. So what does this do? This lets us manipulate our reflections, which are somewhere. And I'm going to have to click in here again, apparently, so I can move it. Um, right here, this reflection one right here. Let's just manipulate this. So that way when we move the slider back and forth, it's actually, um, the reflection color is actually getting added into our final result here. Because again, we didn't want the reflection to be part of the final result. I mean, earlier, because we didn't want lighting, when you move lighting in and out, to manipulate the reflections. We want reflections being manipulated separately. We have a slider already that controls if a surface is reflective or not. So it's important that we do not keep that as part of your lighting calculation and to break the reflections off as a separate piece here. And that's what this does. This keeps reflections off as a separate piece. So basically we're just saying out.color.rgb, which again is our, our lighting and how much of the lighting we're going to use. And then we're multiplying it times our diffuse color plus our reflection color. That's it. And then return out, which I usually like to do on a separate line like that. That's it for the shader. Um, and that lets you manipulate your UMVs and things of that nature in order to get what you like. Um, and then techniques are nothing new. It's, it's all the same stuff. We didn't change anything. Here it is. So, you know, slap it in there, you're good to go. But basically, that's how you can have a whole big manipulation of UMV uh, and allow the artist to do all kinds of cool, awesome tricks with this. So, with that, um, that covers the video. Uh, my name is Nate Nestler, and this has been for Hyperactive Studio. Thank you very much.